Hey guys, it's me Crystal and today I'm going to show you how to make some loom knit fingerless gloves. So you're going to need a few supplies. I have my bulky um, knitting loom here that's 24 pegs and it's a 5 8 gauge loom. And I also have the hook that came along with that and a stitch marker to mark my first peg. And the yarn I'm using is Amigo Chunky. I got this from Hobie and it is a size five bulky yarn. So you can use any yarn that is that size. And I like this yarn, it's just an acrylic and it comes in a lot of pretty colors. This is number 38. And you'll just need one skein of that. Just take your stitch marker and put it on one of the pegs. And this is gonna be your starting peg from here on out. And then you're gonna make a slip knot with your yarn. And then you're gonna just place your loop from your slip knot on that first peg that you have marked with your stitch marker right there and then tighten it up. Now we're gonna do the cast on row. So we're gonna be working to the left. You go behind the next peg and wrap around and then go to the next peg and wrap around. And this is called an E-wrap. Now, so we're doing an E-wrap cast on, but then for the rest of this pattern, we will not be doing an E-wrap. So this is our only E-wrap row. Just go ahead and keep wrapping all the pegs until you get all the way back to the beginning. And then you're just gonna hold your yarn in place and push all the loops down to the bottoms of the pegs. That way we can do the second row for our cast on row here. So then you're just gonna do another row exactly the same way, just wrapping around the pegs, then an E-wrap. And you're gonna do that until you get all the way back to your starting peg. Once you get all the way around and you've wrapped all the pegs twice, you're gonna grab your hook and you're gonna start with the peg you're on and just bring that bottom loop up over the top loop and off of the peg. And then you're just gonna continue that going around, just bringing each bottom loop up and over and off the peg. And just do that until you get all the way back around to the beginning. All right, once you get back to the beginning, we're gonna do our first regular row. We're gonna do a ribbed cuff. And first I'm just pulling this tail end here to the inside of the hoop, so it's out of my way. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go towards the left and we're gonna do knit one, purl one. So for our first stitch, we're gonna just wrap the yarn over and around in this U shape. And then you bring that bottom loop up and over. And that is the knit. Then to purl, you bring it down below the next loop in front. And then you bring your hook down through the loop and pull a loop up from the bottom. It'll look like that. And then you're gonna grab the whole thing and pull the first loop off of the peg and then put that new loop onto the peg and just pull the yarn to tighten it. So that is your purl stitch. So again, we're gonna do another knit stitch. So you just wrap it across and bring the loop over. And then do your next one is a purl. So bring it down below and grab it with your hook, pull up a loop, pull the first loop that was already on the peg off and then put the new loop onto the peg. And you're just gonna, whoops, <laughs> don't do that. Put it back on. Pull the yarn to tighten, and that is what you're gonna do. So just repeat that, knit one, and then purl one, and you're gonna repeat that all the way around. Okay, here we are at the end of our row, so I'm doing my last purl stitch here. Here's our first row completed, our cast on, and then our first row. 
So you're just going to repeat that. You're going to do nine more rows of the knit one, purl one rib. And you're just going to keep doing exactly that same way. So the first one is going to be a knit. And then the second one is a purl. And while you're working this, just um, don't pull your yarn too, too tight while you're um, wrapping around the pegs. So you want it to be tight enough that it doesn't just slip off, but don't like be pulling it super duper tight because it'll just make it harder on you later. It makes the loops harder to pull off the pegs. But just continue that going all the way around until you have 10 rows of the rib all together, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so we got our 10 rows done, and I wanted to show you something that I like to do for mine to make it look a little bit more polished. You'll notice this starting row is kind of loopy and loose looking. It just looks kind of messy, but we can fix that. And this is optional. If you don't, if it doesn't bother you, you can just leave it, but I like to tighten it up a bit. So to do that, what we're gonna do is get our starting knot here, and we're just gonna untie it a little bit. You're just gonna um, find, you know, where you can pull it, um, pull the knot out a little bit. And I just pull the end through just like one part of the knot there. So just like that, and then leave it the rest of the way. But I do loosen it a bit. So just pull it through to loosen it. And then just leave it like that. So the end is still going through that part of the knot, if that makes sense. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start pulling the slack and then we got to pull it around to that knot. So we're going to start here right to the right of our starting knot there. So you see this is the knot part and the next loop over is where we're going to start. And you're just going to kind of pull on that, that first one. You just kind of pull on it. It's kind of hard to tell because it's the first one, but you'll, this will make sense in a minute. So we're just trying to get any slack out. So you start with that one and then you're going to take the next loop that's right to the right of that one. And it's the one that when you pull on it, the slack from the first loop comes over like that. So you see you do that and then you go to the next loop to the right that's attached to that one that you just pulled on and you're going to pull on that and you're going to bring the slack over a little bit more and you're going to see this loop you're making is just going to get bigger and bigger as you go around and sometimes it's kind of tricky to tell which loop to pull but you just kind of fiddle with it and you know it's the next one to the right. Sometimes they're like tighter than others and it's kind of hard to tell. But you're just going to continue this all the way around. And I'll show you how much different it looks here in a second. All right, here I've t I haven't tightened this side yet, but I have tightened this side and you can see it looks a lot neater once you tighten it up. So I'm just going to continue pulling on all my loops until I get the slack all the way over to the knot. And I'll show you what we do. Okay, so we're here. This is like the last loop that I'm pulling on here. I've got a giant loop of yarn now. And then once you get over here, you're just going to kind of pull on the end from the knot and figure out, you know, where to pull. <laughs> and just you're going to pull that slack through to your knot there. So there we go. And then you can just pull the end and get rid of all that excess yarn. And there you go. And I'm just going to leave it like that. I am going to cut off the excess yarn, but just leave it. It's not going to untie or anything. You don't have to tie a knot yet. We'll finish that off once we finish. But you see you saved that much uh, waste from the yarn being so loopy. And now it looks a lot neater and more professional on your edges. So that's just a little trick. Takes a minute, but I think it's worth it. And now we're going to continue on with our fingerless glove. Okay, so for the next rows, we're going to do 20 rows of just plain knit. So this will be really easy. You don't have to think too hard. You just wrap it over and bring the bottom loop up and do it again. And you're just going to repeat that for each row for 20 rows. This is my favorite part because it's super mindless. You can just relax and just as long as you keep up with how many rows you've done, you can just enjoy loom knitting a little bit without any stress. So just go ahead and do that for 20 rows and then I will show you how we're going to do the thumb hole. 
All right, so we did our 20 rows and now we're gonna do the thumb hole. So for this, what we're gonna do is just keep, we're gonna knit just like we did before, except for we're gonna knit back and forth in our rows so that we leave a space. So we're gonna knit around this way and then go back around this way, but it's still just a knit stitch. So it's still really simple. So to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have what's called a turning peg, which just means we're gonna skip the first peg, go behind it, and then you're gonna wrap and we're going to the right this time. So it's the same thing. It's just that you're wrapping in the other direction and you're going in the other direction. So it's the, but it's the same exact stitch. So just wrap around and knit off and you're going to repeat that all the way around until you get back to your starting peg. All right. So I've gone all the way around and I'm on my next to the last stitch here. And then I'm going to do my last stitch, which is going around my first peg. And then I'm going to stop. And then what I'm going to do is go back the other direction. So we're just going to skip the first peg. So for this time we're going to the left, but you just skip your first one and you'll see there's going to be a hole that's going to start to form in the gap there. But then you just go back to the left and knit around this side going all the way around. And then you're going to stop when you get to that peg that's right to the right of the first peg that we have marked there. Okay, so I'm coming back to this is my last peg. I'm going to knit it and there we go. So you can see that gap is starting to form here, but you'll, it'll get a lot more pronounced in a bit. So now we're just going to go back to the right. So we're going to skip this first peg and then just start knitting and go all the way back around. And you're going to do this for 10 rows all together. So this is the third row. And you're just going to keep doing this until you have 10 rows and a nice sized thumb hole. All right, so here's our thumb hole. See how that turned out really nice. And so now to continue, we're just going to make 15 more knitted rows, just going back around to the left. So first you're going to knit across your little gap there and just continue. And this is just going to be 15 regular rows of knitting, just going around in a circle. And um, 15 rows gives you about a two to two and a half inch um, section above the thumb hole. So if you want to make yours a little bit shorter, you can and just make a few less rows. All right, now we've finished the body of the fingerless glove and we're going to do our cast off row. So you're going to knit the first two stitches just as usual. So that's the first one. And then you're going to knit the second one off. And now we're going to start to cast off. So you're going to take this loop and you're going to put it on this first peg. So you're going to pull it off of this peg and bring it over to the first peg. Then you're going to take the bottom loop and knit it off over the top loop. And then you're going to take that loop and put it back on the left peg. And there you go. We got one peg un unknitted. <laughs> so now you're going to do the next one. You're going to knit over the one to the left, the next peg over, and then you're going to take this loop and put it on this peg. And then you're going to bring the bottom loop over the top loop. Then you're going to bring that loop back over to the peg to the left. And you're just going to repeat that around and just continue that until you get to your last two loops and then I'll show you how to finish it off. All right, I'm at my last two loops, so I'm doing my last knit here and then I'm going to just like before take the left loop, bring it over onto the right peg and it's kind of tricky here this last one. It's not wanting to cooperate, but you just get it on there knit the bottom loop off and over, and then you'll have one loop left. And then you're just going to take that off of your loom. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn, just leave a little bit of a tail to weave in, and then just remove that loop from your peg and take the whole loom off and out of there. And then you're just going to pull that loop out to finish off here. And then we're going to need to do one last little stitch here to finish off our last row because there's a little bit of a gap. I'll show you what I mean right here. So here's where the yarn's coming out and you see there's a little bit of a gap before you get to the next knit stitch over in this row. So we just got to connect that. So grab a yarn needle And we're just going to thread the yarn through one of the, the first knit stitch over. So if you look, you see there's these um, V-shape knit stitches here. You're going to be going in the last one of that row. So there's a large one here, and then there's one tiny one here. <laughs> there's a big one. Here's a small one. And we're going through that small one. And you're just going to pull it through like this. So we want to make it blend in. So then you're going to insert your needle down into the same stitch where the yarn was coming out. And it'll make that same V shape, see? And then it blends in really nice and you get a nice seamless um, top of your fingerless glove. And then we're just going to flip it around to the inside and we're going to weave in our end. So first I'm just going to weave under a few stitches just to get kind of down away from the edge. And then I do like to tie a knot just to make sure it's extra secure because I don't want anything coming undone in the wash. So on this stitch that I'm going under, I'm just going to tie a little knot there. And then I'm going to feed it down through a few more stitches just to hide that end and then cut off the excess. All right, that side is done, and now we're going to weave in this other end. So again, I'm just going to thread it onto my yarn needle, and I'm going to kind of flip it inside out a little bit. And I'm just going to figure out where to feed it through, because I want it to blend in pretty well also. So I'm just going to weave the end down through the next stitch over, and kind of pull it to tighten it up a bit. And then I'm just going to go down through a few stitches, and once I get down a little bit, I am going to tie a knot on the side as well, just to get everything nice and secure. And then again, just weave the end in a little bit more and cut off the excess. All right, so now your fingerless glove is complete. You just have to make a second one so you have a pair. But here's how it looks when you put it on, and it's nice and snug, and here's the set. Now I just love how these turned out. I love fingerless gloves. They're so cozy and perfect for fall or if you're ever cold when you sit at your desk or something. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching!